Okay, I think we should start again. Uh, so I'm just going to say one more thing about uh, the Doppler effect before we move on to the next topic. So if you try and work out this same effect in a Newtonian universe, that means you consider the same thing, but you use the Galilean transformation rather than the Lorentz transformation, then the only difference is that this factor gamma disappears. Because this factor gamma is related to the fact that because the source is moving, it is, its clock is time dilated, so therefore it emits more slowly. Right? So this gamma here is simply the time dilation effect. And if there was no time dilation effect, as there is in a Newtonian universe, then the formula would just be this. Now, this gives you a way of testing time dilation then. If you can measure the Doppler effect and see whether this gamma is here or not, then that shows you whether time dilation exists or not, right? Or at least it gives you evidence for the existence of time dilation. Okay, and I'm going to describe a, an early experiment which did just that. So this is an experiment in 1938. It was one of the first experiments to show the time dilation effect directly. And it's known as the ives stillwell experiment. Okay. So the idea is quite simple. The idea is quite simple. You've got a source here, okay, which is emitting at a particular wavelength lambda. Okay. I'll use wavelength. You'll see why in a minute. Um, and the source is moving this way with a high speed v. Okay. And what you do is you measure the frequency, sorry, the wavelength of light emitted in this direction, lambda prime, and frequency of light measured in this direction, lambda double prime. Okay. And you see what you get. So, in terms of lambda, then, I can write the Doppler effect, Doppler form as lambda prime is equal to gamma times lambda times 1 minus v over C. Okay. So cos theta is zero in this direction, right? And lambda double prime is gamma times lambda times one plus V over C. Okay. So this is what you get with time dilation. Without time dilation, you would just simply get lambda prime is lambda 1 minus v over c, and lambda double prime is lambda 1 plus v over c. So you get the gamma just goes away. So this is without time dilation. So what you do is you plot, you measure the wavelengths of light that you get. And you plot them here. So this is a, a graph of the wavelength of light you observe, which is lambda here, right? Without time dilation first, if this is the original wavelength lambda, okay, then lambda prime is less, so it's down here. And lambda double prime is more, so it's over here. Okay? And this is the critical part, lambda is exactly in the middle, right? This is minus v over c, this is plus v over c. So lambda is exactly in the middle. And that's in the case that there's no time dilation. Right? However, if there is time dilation, then that means that this gamma factor will be more than one, and that will increase all the wavelengths, lambda prime and lambda double prime. Okay? So that will shift the lambda prime and lambda double prime wavelengths this way. Okay? So with time dilation, you get a picture like this. Same picture again. It's lambda. But now, both of the Doppler shifted wavelengths are increased. 
Okay. So that means lambda double prime will move further over this way, and lambda prime will be less than that. Okay. So lambda is not in the center with time dilation. Okay, and actually you can work this out mathematically. The center of lambda prime and lambda double prime, that's that, right? And from the formula there with time dilation, this turns out just to be gamma times lambda. Okay, so if you measure the center of these two, as opposed to the original wavelength lambda, the difference between these is exactly equal to the time dilation factor lambda. So it's, it's a very neat experiment. So you measure the, the shift in the center, and that tells you the time dilation factor. Okay. So that's the idea. The only problem with this experiment is how do you actually do it? Okay. It's not an easy experiment to get, you know, take a laser and then throw it really fast. That doesn't really work, because in order for gamma to be measurable, your velocity needs to be very, very fast, right? So it's no good just, you know, firing a, a laser in a rocket or something, right? That's not going to work. So you have to do it in a kind of, well, in, you have to be a bit cleverer than that. So I want to tell you now the details of how the experiment was done. Uh, okay. Actually, I think I'll, I'll draw it over here, so then hopefully I can fix it on one board. So the experiment works like this. You had a, a gas of a particular kind of atoms. Okay, and the original experiment used different isotopes of hydrogen. You ionize these atoms. That means you get rid of the electrons. Okay. So that gives you positively charged hydrogen ions. Okay. The reason you do this is because then it's easy to accelerate them. You then use an electric field to accelerate the ions. Accelerate. In the electric field. Okay. So they, they experience a force, right? The force is equal to the charge times the electric field. So if the electric field is in this direction, they experience an acceleration in this direction. So they all start moving faster. Okay? And because hydrogen is a very light thing, with a large electric field, you can get them going really fast. Okay. Okay. So you get them going really fast. The next thing you do is you deionize. That means you give them the electrons back. Okay. So what you end up with then is high velocity H atoms. And some of these atoms will emit light. As I said, atoms emit light at particular frequencies, and they, okay, when the, the electrons come back into the atom, that process means that some of the atoms will emit light. Okay, so you'll understand this better when we talk about quantum mechanics. The mechanism for these atoms to emit light is quantum mechanical. Okay. So you'll see it after the midterm exam. Anyway. The important thing is these H atoms are moving very quickly and they emit light. And as I said when we did the worksheet question, atoms emit light at very particular frequencies. Okay? So you know the frequencies or the wavelength at which hydrogen atoms emit light. And you do this experiment and you measure the difference in wavelengths of light going in this direction, which is what I call lambda prime, and the difference in going that way, 
is what you call lambda double prime. So in fact, in the experiment, they put a mirror here. Okay, so once the uh, hydrogen atoms go through, you put a mirror here. So then over here, you get both the light emitted directly from the atoms, which is blue shifted. Right? Also, you get the light emitted backwards and reflected off the mirror, which is red shifted. Okay? So here you put your detector. Okay? And you will measure two frequencies of light in the detector, which correspond to lambda prime and lambda double prime. Okay? And then all you do, as I said, is you compare the center of these two with the known wavelength of light emitted by hydrogen, and you see if the center is shifted. Okay? And if the center is shifted, that's evidence for time dilation. Right? The shift is proportional to the gamma factor. Okay? Um, so that was the experiment. It was done in 1938, and indeed, it confirmed the time dilation effect. Okay? So they did see a shift here in the wavelengths of light emitted. 